Hi, it's Dwyer, GamblersAdvisory.com, DwyerVIP.com. Remember, the opinion you should follow should be your own. Just consider this video to be a second opinion from a complete stranger online. Remember, we're also on Roku, Dwyer Boxing, and Sports News. Yesterday, the prediction was Janady Golovkin by KO. Janady Golovkin delivered. Got the KO in something like the sixth round. It was Roman Gonzalez by KO. Roman Gonzalez delivered. But, you know, the fight to beat the casino continues. I hope you have some extra money in your bank account today. Uh, but, we're going to focus not on the highlights, but on the lowlights. Right? If we're going to try to beat the casino going forward, we're going to have to, in the middle of a celebration, when the rest of the world is celebrating a you know, great fighter, we're going to have to look for the uh, chinks in his armor, so to speak. I want to direct your attention to the fourth round of Janady Golovkin's victory over Willie Monroe. Now keep in mind, Monroe is struggling in the fight. He's been down in the second round. So we get to the fourth round, and Monroe is desperate. This is a guy who has never been stopped. He's only lost once ever in his career, and that was in a fight in which he went the distance. So here he is against a big puncher, guy with a greater than 80% KO ratio, and he's down early. Golovkin is landing big shots other than the punches that put him down. Right? Monroe understands he's not intimidating anyone. Monroe himself knows his KO ratio going into the fight is less than half of Golovkin's. Right? So this is a worst case scenario. He starts the fight slow. He's behind big on points. In desperation in the fourth round. And that's the word, desperation. Willie Monroe stands in the middle of the ring. He bends his waist. Golovkin comes forward. Monroe doesn't back up. Right? The two guys' heads come together. Monroe's standing his ground. Moving away hasn't worked. It's gotten him knocked down. It's gotten him, you know, chased. It's found him on the ropes. So here's Willie Monroe with plan B, C, D, or E. He's in the middle of the ring on Janady Golovkin. He bends over. He starts throwing punches to the body. He starts trying to fight inside. And it works. Golovkin's power drops by at least 50%. At least. You notice that Golovkin, who is a big puncher, needs space to throw the big shots. Right? Golovkin's best punches early in the fight are these winging shots where he's from distance and he is getting his entire body into the punch and he's throwing these punches with a little bit of an arc. Up close, he can't do that. Right? The, the leverage that he uses to step forward and lean into shots up close, that's gone. Monroe has, in my opinion, his best moments of the fight in the fourth round in the trenches. He even discovers that he could hit Golovkin with an uppercut in the trenches. Curiously, and it could be in part because it takes a lot of discipline against a slugger to actually stay in the trenches, to stay not at long range, not at mid range, but at short range, where your body's literally up on the other guy's body, where, as I've said, their heads are touching at times. It takes a lot of discipline to stay there, right? Curiously, Monroe after, in my opinion, a great sequence where he holds his own inside, where he actually stops the Golovkin locomotive briefly, 
right for a round. Curiously, Monroe then starts backing away again. Now I know common sense tells us if a guy's throwing big punches, right, if you are there and it's a tornado and you see the tornado, right, you need to move away from the tornado, right? You see the tornado, you felt the winds. You know the tornado is tearing up everything in its path. You've been blown down by the winds. I know common sense tells us, hey, you see a tornado, let's get out of here. Let me get on my back foot. But understand, inside of the tornado, there's calmness. Right? If you can just break through to the inside of the tornado you're not getting blown away you're not getting pushed around you're not getting pursued now the challenge for elite boxers right understand Golovkin is an elite fighter if you're not elite you don't have a chance if you don't have certain skills you don't have a chance. The challenge for elite fighters, those at the top of the game, is to get inside on Janady Golovkin. It's to get inside his tornado. Right? Again, not long range, not mid range, but short range. Right? You need to get inside on him. You need to throw volume up close on him. You need to force him to use his energy to defend himself. A few things really leapt out at you looking at the fourth round. One of them is that Golovkin can't take a step back to create space. He's not that guy. Right? Golovkin's not a guy who, you come inside, he holds you like Vladimir Klitschko to force a reset. So when the referee separates the two of you, guess what? You're back in the danger zone, long range, mid range. He's not that guy, right? He's a guy who's trying to punch with you from the inside. The thing of it is, though, that the huge punching power you see from distance you don't see up close so let me say this I believe elite fighters who fight inside understand that they need to pick a side right if I'm gonna run inside I have to figure out which hand of yours I'm gonna focus on I'm gonna smother Right, Bernard Hopkins, when he came inside on Felix Trinidad, and people forget how unbeatable Trinidad looked back then. Bernard Hopkins picked Trinidad's left hook. He smothered it. Felix didn't have room to operate. The big punches that Felix was using to knock out guys, he didn't have the room to throw those big punches. Now, on Janady Golovkin, I believe a guy needs to come in and focus on his right hand. Why? Because Golovkin's right-handed. Right? That right hand's in back. Golovkin doesn't want you invading his space. He just doesn't. Right? Smothering the left leaves too much room for his right. I believe you want to smother the right hand. Now I made a comment in an earlier video, it was really stream of consciousness, it's what I thought, I stand by that comment, but I was surprised at the blowback from you, the YouTube community, and the comments to that pre-fight video. Right, in the pre-fight video for this fight I said that I believed fellow middleweight champion Miguel Cotto would give Golovkin all kinds of problems. I stand by that comment. 
Understand Kodo's big punch is his left hook. Understand Kodo's left hook to the body is very hard to recover from. When Kodo gets going with that left and he's walking you down, many great fighters, Carlos Quintana, Wilt, now my point is simply this, Kodo also knows how to fight low. Right? Don't confuse height with ability. I'm telling you in my opinion, Gennady Golovkin has an easier time against taller fighters than he does smaller fighters. A smaller guy with a big punch who can get inside and start raking Golovkin's midsection, right? Get inside to where Golovkin can extend his arms to hit you with his big shots. They're going to find a guy who's vulnerable, right? Golovkin, keep in mind, doesn't even clinch you on the inside in any kind of structured way. In my opinion, he doesn't really have a strategy on the inside. You'll notice in the fourth round, Monroe lands a hellacious uppercut on the inside against Golovkin. Golovkin just keeps his head there. He's thinking offense. This is different than Vladimir Klitschko. Right? Golovkin also doesn't have quick lateral movement. He's not a guy who, if you lean on him, is going to suddenly cut to the side and throw a combination. That's not who he is. He's a power puncher. That's his game. Right? He's not thinking about quick combinations to win rounds. So, and I'm going to ignore this phone call in the background here. So let me say this. A guy who can fight small, who can get inside, I believe would take away Golovkin's biggest assets. Right? That guy needs to have foot movement so he can keep it in the middle of the ring. Or, if he's able to back up Golovkin, keep it where Golovkin's on the side of the ring. That wasn't Willie Monroe Jr. Right? Monroe Jr., you knew he was in trouble just by where the guys were. Right? He's up, up, he's up on the side of the uh, ropes. That doesn't work. He's too far away from Golovkin. That doesn't work. Didn't this guy look at the Matthew Macklin tape? Didn't he look at the Ashita tape? He's too far away. When you're far away and Golovkin hits you and he's too far away to be clinched, and Golovkin hates to be clinched, what are you going to do? You're getting hit with big shots, wide angles. It's hard to read the angles on Golovkin's punches. You're going to notice if you look at the films, he's throwing punches where he's leaning. It's, it's three-quarter mass punches. It's punches at this angle. Right? He's leaning and throwing these looping shots. And like Ken Norton from an earlier generation, I'm telling you guys really can't read it. Willie Monroe's getting hit with bombs. If you're up on him, if you're up on his rib cage, like Kasim Uma was, and you're letting your hands go, you don't have to worry about wide angle punches. Right? Let me name another fighter. This will be controversial, who I think gives him certainly more trouble than Danny Jacobs. More trouble than Hassan and Jacob. Right? As I said, Golovkin does better against bigger guys. Right? A guy who would give him trouble. And I hope people with power are watching this video because think it through blockbuster fight, this guy might be simply too fast for Golovkin. 
He could dart around. Then he could come in and strike. He's a southpaw. So he'd be able to come in and bother Golovkin, smother his right hand. And that's Manny Pacquiao. I'll agree, Manny Pacquiao isn't the same Manny Pacquiao he was a few years ago. But he still hits hard. He's still quick. Now understand, Golovkin doesn't really throw a great jab. Neither Pacquiao nor Golovkin does. Right? If Manny Pacquiao is able to be low, give Golovkin next to nothing to hit. And if he's able to just leap in, right? You know, come in low, leap in, hit Golovkin. Understand, Golovkin doesn't have the Mayweather back foot game. He doesn't have the Mayweather counterpunching game. He doesn't have the one man well Marquez back foot counter punching set traps game to make Pacquiao pay when Pacquiao jumps in. Can we agree Manny Pacquiao is quicker handed than Janady Golovkin? Can we agree that Golovkin is viewed as much heavier than Pacquiao even though Pacquiao at one point actually held the title at 154? Right? My point is simply, you know, don't be too confused or thrown by the different weight classes. Right? Golovkin is the champ at 160. Pacquiao held the belt at 154. Golovkin can't match Pacquiao's hand speed. Pacquiao does his worst against guys who can counter him with right hands, right, who are reactive, who can be on their back foot. That's not Janady Golovkin. You see that in the fourth round here. So my point is this. I believe guys who can fight small, especially quick southpaw type guys, right, guys who, you know, can come in with Cotto, he could come in, Cotto could set up shop, he wouldn't have to leave. Pacquiao's more of a darter, Pacquiao would dart in and out. All I'm saying is, Golovkin, without the back foot game, without the straight right counter, right? without the ability to really get a shorter guy off his ribcage would have problems, right? Paradoxically, if Golovkin were to fight, let's say, taller guys who stay at mid to long range, I think Golovkin feasts on guys like that, right? Peter Quillen hits awfully hard. He doesn't move that well. He's flat-footed. He's almost certain to get caught with some big Golovkin shots. Are you so sure that Miguel Cotto would get hit with those same shots? Right? Wouldn't, wouldn't it be a situation where Golovkin's trying to cut off the ring on Cotto? Who doesn't care? Who is jumping inside and forcing Golovkin as he's trying to hunt Cotto down to actually defend himself inside, up close? How could you look at that fourth round, realize that Willie Monroe has less than half the KO percentage of Golovkin, doesn't have the punch of a Miguel Cotto? There's no threat in that fourth round. That Monroe is going to throw the kind of punch that Cotto used to knock down Sergio Martinez multiple times. Right? There's no threat of Cotto, uh, you know, landing a liver shot like Hopkins landed against 
Oscar De La Hoya to take away Golovkin's legs. And yet, light hitting Willie Monroe was giving Golovkin all he could handle inside in that fourth round. Right? Styles make fights. I know it sounds crazy, but I'm just telling you. Cotto, who weighed 164 recently in a pre-fight weigh-in, you know, they have a 30-day weigh-in, a 7-day weigh-in, before his fight with Daniel Gill. Cotto might be short. He's not that small. Right? A Cotto, I believe, would be a bigger test for Golovkin than a Danny Jacobs, than an Andy Lee, than a Hassan and Jickham, than a Peter Quillen. That's how I see it. It is counterintuitive. Just like the calmness in the middle of a tornado is. Let me hear from you. Leave your comments for me here online. Keep in mind, let's be clear here. I know I've been critical of Golovkin. I picked him by KO in this fight. But let me hear from you your thoughts on which opponent would give Golovkin a hard time. My opinion, mid-range, long-range, not the way to go unless you're an absolute master from long-range, and those are very few, right? A guy up close on his ribcage, like Kasim Uma was, could give Golovkin a lot of trouble. That's how I see it. Let me hear from you. Thanks for stopping by.